Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Today we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop and we're going to be working on steering racks. I'm going to show you how to take them apart, put them back together and hopefully make them work. All right, now we're ready to insert the rack into the housing. Um, you want to pay attention, obviously. Uh, here's the deal. You have to insert it from the end that doesn't have the threads on the inside. If you insert it and you go too far and you try to pull it back, those threads are going to damage it. Or if you try to insert it from there, it's going to ruin this seal. So what I usually do is just take some... I usually use wheel bearing grease or chassis grease. Put a little lube on there. Uh, and we want to put it in the right direction because this rack intersects with this pinion here, so it goes this way, obviously. Okay? So I'll put a little grease on this, and then work that lip in there. And typically, here's where you can run into problems, especially on that later rack, where this lip seal goes in this tube, there's, there's a, an edge. You gotta make sure it doesn't catch that lip and fold it back or cut it. That's uh, pretty important. It's, it's easier to turn like this. So this one just slid right in. I watched it, it slid right in. So now, since we don't put 90 weight in there anymore, I'm gonna load this rack up with grease. And I just kind of fill the teeth, because it's hard to do once it's in there. A lot of times, since those PFTE seals are a little bit tight, That's where I wanted to get to. So, now what I do is I usually get this to about right there. And I will stick that that mounting bolt for that block in here. And I do that mostly to keep it from taking off on me in case it takes off. So I line this up. And this, here's another spot you gotta watch too. See how that seal's starting to look, fold over? They make these really bitchin' tools. Now it's under, they're flat spoons. They're like a seal pick. And this is where, if you screw this up now, you're not going to know it's bad until it's on there and starts leaking. But it slips in much easier. It got stuck there, so that's... Obviously, you got to watch out. You don't damage those threads on the end, so I'm not really slamming it. All right, so now I can take that out. It's not important. Uh, you can do that. Typically, I'll just do it on a piece of wood or aluminum, but yes, you can do that too. But I'm always worried about it kicking off on me. But dead blows just as adequate. So, uh, there are some ball bearings in here that don't fall out. It's a miracle, isn't it? What they have is they have a little snap ring on here to hold it in place. These take the thrust. So when this is all bolted down, this top part, it squeezes on that and that keeps it from walking up and down. I'm sorry? That's right. That's why I pulled the sleeve off. So. And I've seen them where they're rusty before because the boots have been bad for a long time. A lot of water's got up in there. All right. So, I'm 
remember these. I had them laid out. I always try to keep things oriented the same way when I'm moving around, top and bottom. So this is for the spool valve and this is for the gear mesh. For the later racks, if you look at it, bolts. This one has studs. I prefer the studs because then you can stack all those things on there. It's really hard to get them all lined up when you're putting this one. Uh, these paper gaskets are there just to keep out water and such. But the funny thing is, is they put them on there, right? So I'm putting this on nice and gently. They rip very easy. And then they put a whole stack of shims and just put a paper gasket on the other top of it. So in between, there's no paper. I, don't I never did get my head around that, but I'm not an engineer, that's why. There's a bunch of RTV on that thread. And if those are shims, it's a variable number of them, and you're showing it to you. You, uh, I, unless there's a problem, like it, this, if there were, if the car came in and there was a whole lot of slack in the steering, and I determine it's this, then you can take out some shims and tighten it up. And there, there is in the shop manual a method to uh, check that. To, oh, that was the wind, wasn't it? There's an avocado tree right outside of here. Um, there is a method to check that gear lash and how much tension, but I've never really gone through all that. I'm kind of a by guess and by golly guy. Uh, anyways, and it's interesting when I hire new mechanics that are so used to looking up the torque on everything and pattern and all this stuff and what's the specification. I say, you can look it up. And I don't try to tell them my bad habits because obviously they're doing it the right way. I was never, uh, I'm always in too much of a hurry, it seems like. So now what we got to do. Well, you were raised under the principle of Fitter's Field. I was what? You were raised under the principle of Fitter's Field. Fitter's Field. Fit versus feel? Fitter's Field. The person who's fitting it feels the right thing. <laughs> I like that. My dad said, no, I was, I was raised, or I learned the, the trade, and this is my motivation, was I used to do that in 10 minutes. What's taking you so long? <laughs> and it worked. It made me fast. But, uh, and I was just lucky that I, I, I'm gifted with an mm -hmm. innate talent for mechanical things. Some people have it, some do not. Well, I call logic. Hmm? It's largely called logic. <clears throat> well, see, that's, that's a big debate there. You could debate that all day long, logic. Uh, I, I talked about something this morning with some friends on, on the fact that uh, I am handicapped with a high IQ, which means I think I know more than I really do <laughs> to me. <laughs> so anyways, all right. So we have to get this seal on to this, I want to put that on before we put it in because there's a little procedure. If you look at this and you think, okay, all you got to do, this has to be pressed in there. This presses in pretty easy. Um, this lower bearing plate holds it in place so it's not going to pop out. You have an O-ring on top which seals this, this, how, uh, yeah, this housing up against there so no fluid comes out of there. But then, if you look at this, you look. there's a lot of sharp edges. If I just jam that on there, I'm going to damage this new seal. So there's this cute little trick that I can't wear gloves to do. And take some electrician tape. Find the end. Now there's two ways I can, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this with one layer to cover up all those sharp edges. The key is, is to do it in the right direction. Otherwise, the seal can grab all the tape going down. So what I do is I start from the bottom up. That way, each overlap 
protects the leading edge. So the lip of that seal goes in? Hmm? So the lip of that seal... It doesn't face this way, no. That's, it faces up. But there's still the, the likelihood that I can damage it going on there. So why don't you assemble it in three parts rather than assemble it on the bench, put all three in the because then you'll be able to... This has more flexibility to get over those edges. Well, that's, that's a good way of trying it. This works pretty good, though. I'll stick with this. I don't know how... Huh? We were all here. Yeah, we, we, we thought you were saying that. you could put it together on a bench, but don't do that. No, no. <laughs> I'll let you try it. I'm an old man. You're the one with the experience. Right? Well, that's even, and, and that's earned, usually, experience. Uh, once I learn a way to do something that doesn't screw up, I stick with it. And when I, when I have new guys start working for me, I say, I'd like you to try it this way. If you find a better way, go for it. But this is what's worked for me. Um, all right, so you can put a little splooge on there. And then this walks on pretty easy. Now when there are new, just so you know, when there are new rings, when I change those, then what I do, and it's tricky, is I pull that inner spring out of this seal. You can, on a new seal, you can get that out of there pretty easy. So there's less tension, so it slips over easy, because sometimes those rings are not out far enough. Um, and then uh, do it that way, but don't forget to put the <laughs> ring back in. And it's, it's a trick to do it when the seal is compressed. <laughs> yeah. The most common thing I've seen on guys putting these together, and I'm guilty of it too, is to leave this one O-ring out. You start it up and it works great. It growls so you add more fluid and then it growls and then all of a sudden these are getting big. So that's, that's just, that's the experience part. I've learned. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this up with grease too. The thing with, the only bad thing about grease is Unless it's really sticky, once you run the gears past it, it squishes out. That's why the 90 weight was kind of nice. And then there is um, a caged needle bearing at the bottom to hold this thing good. So it's really hard to get grease in there. So what I usually do is just load up the nose so that it squishes it out. And what kind of grease is that? This is uh, high temp. Well, it's not high tech. It's like wheel bearing chassis grease. It's nothing fancy. Over there. Where's my cool tool? <laughs> 